There she goes. Hello. We'll call that the warm up period. Let everyone tune in. Oh man, we don't have to. Oh, okay, all right, we got. All right. Everybody, it's a comic book. Look at your boy John on demand, aka Mr. Freeze, aka it's cold outside. Joined, of course, today by co CEO Tom Devine. And we are staying warm, uh, drinking our tea, <laughs> living that adventurous life. And you guys, it is so freaking frigid here in South Dakota. How has your week been? Like, you survived the snow apocalypse? On, yes, on I mean, I, I've been pushing through. Yeah. I, as you can maybe hear, I'm a little nasally today because uh -oh. I got a little bit of a cold. But you know what? The snow apocalypse ha happened and the Frozone took over, yep. uh, ran through Sioux Falls, and he froze everything. And but. It doesn't matter because the Kansas City Chiefs boom, 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 are going to the Super Bowl for the first time in my life. I know this is a comic book themed <laughs> podcast, our mean show, and John, I know you don't pay attention to the NFL, but I'm going to steamroll right in here and say I've never <laughs> been more happy. I was born around Kansas City. I've loved them my entire life. I've literally seen them be the worst team in the league, but we've never made it to the Super Bowl, and we did, so I got my Kansas City. Kansas City Chiefs shirt on, and I just watched them win. Um, yeah, good you got luck. Your, you got little shorts here. Yeah, I got my sh my Kansas City shorts on. Oh my gosh, dude! I'm just decked out. I had yeah. a glove too, um, but yeah, good luck to the Packers and the 49ers who are in right now as we do this. Um, so yeah, sorry to steamroll nope, right that into that. Okay. I had to though because nope. I was so We're all happy fans done. about something. We're That's right. So something. I can be a nerd about comics and what. Starcraft 2 right before you came over, so your boy exactly. loves those computer games. Video game little, nerd. little Blizzard Entertainment. Um, so today, you guys, we are going to be just reviewing books that we picked up this past week. Um, and some of the books, or one of the books, rather, that I picked up is not from this last week, full disclosure, but I missed it on a previous run, so there's that. And that happens. I and mean, um, that's every comic book fan knows that, right? So, I mean, I, and I, I'm just so not organized. Like, I don't make lists. I literally just go in. Get the stuff that's in my box that they set aside. Go yeah. look at the wall. I'll probably miss one or two things because I'm just like, what do I want? You know? I know. And you try to go through line by line. You know, you get Rainbow makes it so nice that, you know, you got your new comic wall. So you go straight over to your new comic wall. Yep. You start parsing through. And sometimes if there's a guy standing there, maybe you split it in half and you parse this side and then you parse the next one. But, hey, man, it can get it, it can get out of hand. I'm pretty good about the books like I want to have, like you said, you put it in your box. Just do that, yeah, or just yeah. just know beforehand that you're going to get them. And then, but then there's other books like bum 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 bum. Oh yeah, we um, we're going to review comic books today, guys. Um, review here is uh, Hellboy the Winter Special, which I just picked up on a whim. You know, I didn't plan on picking this up. Um, so it, you know that's that's the fun part about oh, picking up comics. So is that like a compilation? Because I see a lot of creative team on there. Yeah, it sure is. So today I'm going to review Hellboy, Winter Special, and Undiscovered Country Three. Okay. Um, John, what are you going to review? Um, from my side of the world, Ruins of Ravencroft, Sabretooth. Oh boy. Boom. Um, Agents of Atlas number five. Super sick. Super sick. Uh, Venom: The End one shot. Mm. And then Iron Man 2020, just to really bring in that new year with a, a theme. So. Cool pink cover. I know, it's very pink. You know, so yeah. that's probably, that's, that's nice. nice. Yeah. So that's kind of, that's kind of the lay of the land today. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry, um, man. You see, he's asking me to get comments going because we've had an agreement that we're going to use my phone. <laughs> but I've yet to been able to actually do it where oh, um, no. I pull it up correctly and, and check. You know, so I'm sorry to all the comic book lookers out there. All right, looks like they're live right now. Oh, that's live with us. All right, um, let me join. Sorry. All right, so fine. cool. I'm gonna while I uh, click into this. Um, do you want to start uh, with it. one of your Let's first reviews, and then I'll then you okay. hit it over to me. And so far, we got Justin Fafer. What's up, Justin? Thank you for saying what up to KC. I appreciate that. And Peter Schroeder, let's laser drink to the couch auction. Have we missed it? I, you haven't missed anything, so here we go. Um, <laughs> kick off those reviews now, Johnny Boy. Oh my goodness. All right, you guys. So the past two episodes, I've been pretty cheerful and very generous with my beers. Reviews with, and that's not going to be me tonight, unfortunately. Um, Did you get some not great books this week, John? It's complicated. It's complicated. It's complicated. I, I read three of them. 
the not good ones and literally fell asleep in the recliner. Mm. Uh, and I just didn't have the energy to go on to read the fourth one. And usually I can bang out like 12 or whatever. Dang. But like, they, they literally put you to they sleep. They literally put me to sleep. That's so brutal. this is this is this is gonna be rough, but we're gonna we're gonna do our best here. And first of all, you guys, the the week when I when I did my live video on Thursday, I mean, the most exciting thing I had to talk about was the Power Ranger short box I picked Which up. Which was I was very excited about that, but yep. yeah, ultimately it's been a rough week. Anyways, we'll jump right in here. Uh, Saber Two is hanging out on top. Ruins of Ravencroft. Oh, did we get a comment? Is this the couch auction? I'm not sure what the couch auction I'm is. I'm not familiar with the couch auction. Sorry, is. guys. Yeah. We got two people asking about the couch auction. Come on, man. I hope, yeah. I hope you guys get to see this auction of the couch, and I hope the couch is super sick with, like, yeah. cup holders and all sorts of other couches. And nobody things. wants this couch. This couch is lived on and fierce and, uh, yeah, <laughs> it's it's one of a kind. Trust me. <laughs> Anyways, <clears throat> uh, Prof Sabretooth, um, first of all, just to kick it off, the cover was so exciting to me because the other one was like Wolverine in an older costume that wasn't as good. Um, so I love the Sabretooth one. But um, uh, the cover, unfortunately, does not bear much of anything to do with the book whatsoever. Um, well, he looks badass. He looks badass. Overall, like the, the art and everything was sick. I mean, it was a cool like asylum kind of a feel. Wolverine's a patient. But it's just your typical Wolverine goes in on Sabretooth um darkness i don't know like the whole book just wasn't good and the unfortunate thing is i'm just not familiar with ravencroft at all sure so they they alluded to this and what absolute... is ruins of ravencroft uh, it's so, a, is it is it a sane asylum or base, basically yeah, right? yeah that's what ravencroft and so is, and right? it was yeah it was an absolute carnage because they had a book pertaining to that too mm -hmm. but i'm just kind of like i don't know why i picked up this book that's the cover <laughs> And well, so, the cover's badass. So don't ever judge a book by its cover, yeah. would be my advice. I don't recommend this book, though, just because I kind of, I read it, I was like, that's different. And it's, it's you know, it's a different perspective. But at the end, I was just kind of like, who cares? Yeah. Um, and so I have a really special announcement at the of these three books at the end of the episode. You do? That you're absolutely going to hate. Yeah, oh, I'm my so God. Marvel fanboy. Yep. Let's... So, oh, uh, uh, this one is actually not getting any beers tonight. Zero? Zero beers. Holy... Schnikes! Yeah. Zero out of six beers. Yeah. Dang, man. I mean, a dark story with Wolverine versus, you know, Saber Tooth. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't seem like it'd be that bad, but okay, man. Yeah. All right, you heard it here for, first, folks. Well, I picked up a delightful book. Um, this, like I said, this was a, on a whim. I'm not even actually reading Hellboy. I haven't, I'm not current. Or is BPRD still coming out? I don't know. Um, but I still, I've, I, you know, I've read tons of bprd of tons in that world and so every once in a while especially when they have a one shot i'll go shoot you know i'll just i'll just grab this so this is the winter special i saw a bunch of creators i'm gonna well, uh, chris roberson chris roberson i'm a big fan of mm -hmm. i had i bought him drinks at FableCon. oh yeah and okay, okay. i gotta hang out with him for a for <laughs> an hour or so show. I and i had so much fun talking to him and getting the insight that the creators have so seeing him on this was really exciting for me um and he story so this ends up being three stories yeah so it ends up being three stories the first one's by mike mcnola it's actually the mm -hmm. only one that has hellboy in it is the first story because that's always how hellboy stories go you know hellboy doesn't always come in it's all about this world that they've built with demons and ghosts and other different things. And this first one's about this ghost street that comes around every so often. And through this exchange of a this coin with this old ghost man and Hellboy coming in to try to help these people, it all gets resolved and the ghost mm. street goes away. It's a pretty standard um, story, but the art is really, really well. Um, the second one is, it's not a... Um, uh, like I said, it's not a Hellboy's not in it, but what it is is it's a about this demon that's you know this is the winter special, so it's all really cold. It's in this there there's these people, this group of people in this winter cottage, and this demon comes and uh. takes one person back to hell. Uh, and then the third one, it's about um, it shifts back to like long ago, maybe it seems to be like 1400s or something like that. It looks like the Crusaders are there, and uh, and then it's this little girl are this, uh, excuse me, this woman has a baby and it is like a 
Dracula vampire baby. All three stories together, nothing blew me out of the water, but it was really fun to read. Pop in, catch up on, on Hellboy, get these little vignettes of the Hellboy universe. It was really fun. I give this four out of six beers. Um, classic Hellboy. Got to pick up if you see it. So what do you got next for us, John, for the next review? <laughs> next review, all right. Venom uh, the end. You Venom. know if it's Venom, John Venom. picks it up. Venom. He's Venom through and through. Venom the end. Oh, my He's read John somehow has read <laughs> so many shitty Venom comics in his life, and he owns them all. I mean, I'm talking... H hundreds, possibly a thousand <laughs> Venom comics that are not that great, but John does not get burned. He does not give up. He will continue to always buy that Venom book. Oh my god. Well, <laughs> unfortunately... Maybe this is um, it. This could be a this, six out of six beer. This is not a six out of six beer. I mean, I gotta be honest, dude. There's some great cosmic moments in here in artwork. Oh, that looks dope. Yeah. It, it, it is. Except that the whole thing is literally oh, weird. Um, what? So the whole thing is literally just all about the symbiote life and fast forwarding in the future, like the future of Venom. It looks like a video game, it's, or it looks like a toys back carton or something. You know, like the yeah, back of the yeah. cardboard on a video. Yeah. I mean, so it is. It is insane. So it basically depicts like Venom's we future with Eddie back. Brock. Um, the panels and stuff were really interesting. I love the cosmic presence. Um, Eddie Brock's fate, as it turns out, is he basically becomes a lifeless corpse, um, and Venom does his, the symbiote does its best to keep him alive because he loves Eddie, um, and it basically goes through the entire history, the entire future, it's, it's a lot of fun, um, but then you get into this stuff about, um, <laughs> like, there's an, um, emulation of Tony Stark towards the end that basically take over the universe and the symbiotes uh, try to fight back except none of it makes sense and this was one where i legit got through it barely and was like what in the hell just happened like <laughs> i was so upset because i wanted to like this so who do you think this is for <laughs> Conspiracy do you think <laughs> Dude, legit i mean do you is it setting up a book that's coming or is this like an explanation for Venom in uh, general, or um, I or, mean, I have you just uh, yeah, because it seems like here's the thing I haven't read it right, yeah. but this seems like a concept, yeah. like a conceptual anti comic book. It's not like a normal comic book, I mean, it's not like word bubbles and narrative that way, so I mean, it's yeah. some sort of different thing, yeah. I mean, so, I mean, at least they gave it a shot for me. I was just kind of like. I, I don't know, man. I don't know. But I, I'm going to only give this one beer because... If you guys know anything about the end, or if yeah. you heard anything like, before, it, or why, why yeah, it came why around, please let us know. And Ken, what up? Good to see you from the basement. You. Yeah. Um, so, one beer, for sure. Um, one this, beer. This, Zero and a one. This Damn, is dude. rough, man. Yeah. This is a rough week, so... That's okay. That happens. Um, this is one <laughs> Venom book I do regret getting. <laughs> Oh, that's tough. Okay. That's tough. Um, so I only had bought two books this week. As you guys know, my book's a little lighter. Uh, you know, my stack's usually a little lighter. I'm a, I am ai don't always go for, you know, too much of from Marvel and DC these days, even though, you know, I know everything about Marvel mm -hmm. and DC's history, mm -hmm. as in I've, um, you know, read, the, you know read the comics for a very long time. But I'm very interested in, in expanding Images Library and Booms Library and IDW and um, unlicensed original properties is where is my jam. Yeah. So, Undiscovered Country, um, this should be the best, right? It's Scott Snyder. Um, he's writing, partnered with Charles Soule, and then the arts by Gillespie, Cameron O'Coley, and Danielle or or Lalandi, something like that. I don't know. Uh, the art's great though. The story though is starting to get really convoluted so i'm going to give you guys a, a quick background of what undiscovered country is basically something has happened where the america has been completely shut off nobody's been able to get into to america some sort of post-apocalyptic world um where like capitalism and different things have taken over sure. and and uh then there's this group who nobody knows what's happening on in the U.S., but to the outside world, they would assume that they're all very advanced and and um, 
they're uh, technologically f better than everyone else because they are all closed off and they don't allow anybody in. But in reality, it has turned into like a lawless land that in this episode we find out, or this issue, we find out that the time works differently inside America now. And it could be like thousands and thousands of years in the future why it's only been 30 years outside <coughs> of America. We are following this group of people that have infiltrated. They're the first people to infiltrate America since this time, this thing that happened 30 years ago when they closed themselves off. And they are finding all sorts of crazy life forms and, and they met up with this um, person who told them that America is now a spiral and they have to, it's with different ecological, um, you know, anomalies throughout this entire, each sector has different ones and they'll have to make it in to get to the heart and it seems like under other dimensional and it's getting just way, way convoluted, man. It's hard to mm -hmm. follow, and it's too much right away. Uh, I mean, I will follow, and I, I will continue to read it at least until issue five. Give it that full series arc. But I got to tell you, man, I wasn't, I wasn't pumped on this one. And and while the art is good, um, it's just not. A, it's just too convoluted without being super interesting. Uh, the premise is by far the best part, and the character work is not holding up with the same way that the premise is. So um, for this, unfortunately, I'm going to give this two out of six beers, um, hoping that the it can come back. I really liked the first issue, um, but um, really, it's it's fallen a little bit since then and just kept on getting more and more dense in a way that it doesn't have enough room to be that dense. Mm. So... What are you going to do? You know what I'm saying? Johnny can't win them all. Can't win them all. That's for sure. All right. Well, we're, we'll continue on that streak here. Oh, boy. Um. So up next, you guys, we are rolling Hot Pink. Hot Pink. Oh, ow. Iron Man 20 Twizzle. Um, so first of all, you guys, I was curious about this book only because I've heard so much about the suit. I'm not familiar with it. I'm not familiar with the history surrounding it or anything. For Iron Man fans, though, I suppose this is a big deal. Um, overall... Um, I, I first just started reading like the recap here and I caught the line about his adoptive brother, Arno Stark. And I'm like, I huge eye roll. Huge what? Adoptive, eye roll. Adoptive, brother. adoptive brother. Do you know anything about this guy? No, but the book was smart. And at the very end for those of us that aren't Iron Man literate about this guy gave the timeline oh, it did. of when it first appeared. So I actually thought that was really helpful. So nice. that's going to at least guarantee one beer for this book. Well, this whole back part, this yeah. is how your Venom comic was the entire time. Yeah, except it was just way too much. <laughs> it was way extra. This gave it two pages. Yeah. It was perfect. Yeah. That was Give me the Twitter pages. version, not the essay version. <laughs> you know? Um, so anyway, but like, I don't know. So uh, the, the cover texture is really weird to me. It's like different Ooh. from other... Cheaper ones. Oh, it I is. I don't yeah, know. Which I like that. Yeah. That's kind of cool. It's glossy. and So that's know. cool. Um, artwork was okay. I like that. But ultimately, the gist of this is that Arno is trying to be the new Tony, essentially. Gotcha. And the there are robots rebelling, which it turns out that these robots are being led by Machine Man, which is a super, like, um, kind of C-list character. He's actually really cool, but... The way that they're using him in this book I thought was kind of a step down, but he is literally leading a robot revolution, and so um, there was a series of Nick Fury life model decoys that went rogue and are under his instruction now, and they went to liberate some construction robots, so now there's a hostage situation, but there's only one hostage because there's only one human, the rest were all the robots. Oh my um, god, LMDs, man. And, um, yeah, and it was just the most bizarre book ever. So anyways, Arno shows up in the Iron Man suit and everyone's freaking out, like, oh my god, it's Iron Man, you know, yeah. saving the world. Um, there's also a weird scene with Tony Stark's parents slash Arno's parents about having them... Uh, restored, so I'm gathering that they're probably robots or something too. But they're like, hey, can we leave the house at some point, or are you going to keep us prisoner here? And he was like, what, like you did me? Because evidently he was hooked up to some machine or something. I don't oh. know his backstory at all. So to <laughs> me, the scene was like, it was meant to be significant, and I'm like, yeah. I don't care. Because That's I don't know. I yeah. don't know. Um, <laughs> so I ultimately, I probably should not have picked this up, because I don't have a lot, a lot of Iron Man literature anyways. I know enough about Machine Man. To know that this rendition was really kind of blah. My favorite scene, though, was when they went up to this robot nightclub. And <laughs> the um, 
who is it? He brought in a bomb squad robot from the police that he just picked up and was like, hey, do you want to not do your job and come with me? <laughs> and the robot's like, yeah. So they walk into this club and they're like, wait, is that Herbie from the Fantastic yes. Four? <laughs> that was so great. So anyways, it's like a whole nightclub of all the robots in Marvel. Universe. I mean, that's kind of so cool. So that's another beer. Yeah. <laughs> that's so that's another a huge beer. bit of a yeah. beer there. So Hell yeah, the dude. Herbie cameo in the timeline at the end, two beers. Dude, that's funny. You've um, got a sentinel in here at the end oh trying to sneak God. his head in. <laughs> Isn't that funny? That's great. So, I don't know. I'm going to give this a two out of six beers, only because I don't know what's going on. Oh, and it's a whole They're uh, going with the whole event, man. Thing too, which I'm like, eh, I'm going to probably sit that one out. Are you going to? Yeah. You're doing X-Men right now. It's hard to do two events yeah. at the same time. Yeah. You like, know what I mean? But for the Iron Man fan, I can see how this could be appealing. Plus, they're having multiple series. Yeah. So, that's cool, That's too. dope, dude. Yeah. But, Iron Man 2020. Money 20. That's what I'm calling 2020. So, money 20. in the spirit of 2020, two beers. Yeah, dude. Money 20, two beers. Hell yeah, all right, let's close it off with that book that you got last week, but you yep. didn't get a chance to yep. read, yep. or, you know, pick up, I mean, yep. you got it all picked up and yep. read, what do you think? All right, Agents of Atlas, number five, you guys, you know how I feel about this team, they are a lovely bunch, um, representing the Far East sector of the Marvel U, um, it's been a lot of fun, this has been just such a great book from start to finish, there's the quirky moments, um, there's the fighting, there's the action, um, there's the plot and everything. And for me, it's that perfect balance of, you know, learning new about new characters while well, kind of being familiar with some of them. So I was very content as a reader. Oh, yeah. um, a little bit of animal cruelty in this book. There's oh, actually, no. um, there's a dragon that's being imprisoned um, and they're harvesting the scales. Um, and so the gist of it, this whole series is um, uh, there's a guy that made a place called Pan, which is a multi-dimensional thing, a place where people can port in from all the different cities. And it's powered by the scales of this dragon that they captured that they just found in this issue. So if you haven't read any of it, sorry to spoil it, uh, but it is a lot of fun. Um, so who are the agents of Atlas now? I mean, yeah, who are the characters? Whole you know? new team. So we yeah. have Amadeus Cho. You nice, I love him. So Master, smart, and I love him. Swordmaster for sure, who has his own solo series. Uh, White Fox, who had a one shot. Oh, cool. Um, Silk uh, from the pages of Spider Man. Nice. Um, and then God, okay. And then you have Wave and Arrow and. Um, crescent and she has the bear oh yeah and she's really cool with that kind of stuff nice um and unfortunately i haven't gotten to see her like bear out in a minute so i'm kind of looking forward to oh, that yeah. but gotcha. um yeah it's a lot of fun and they have their own giant man <laughs> Whoa, <laughs> cool. that was like super rad nice so, from mumbai that's sweet which i had no idea um about him until like issue two i'm like wait what cool <laughs> and then luna snow i forgot about her yeah uh also had her own one shot and then has a single online so if you guys uh, do you want to geek up to some true K-pop? Definitely go check it out. Nice. They, they legit have. Dude, thing. that's sweet. And yeah. I mean, yeah. Written by Greg Pak. He's yeah. so good. I mean, It's he's a fun a, book, he's, though, he's from a, start to writer. finish. If you guys aren't rocking it, though, totally check it out. It's a total pop piece. Um, the end of this issue has Namor rising out from the sea. Imperious Rex. Oh, yeah. Um, and then they're going to do battle in Atlantis Attack. So, of course, they got to get that next week. Um, check that out. But, nice. Yeah, I'm excited. So that was that was <coughs> definitely a str I give it one a five. Nice, nice. Little, little grouchy this week. I feel I mean, no sixes or anything, but hey, that's okay. That's not every right. week you get sixes. I mean, I still had a really good book with Hellboy, Undiscovered mm -hmm. Country, not as good. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So, but yeah. other than that, man, just been catching up on Arrowverse shows. Um, so get down, break it down. Okay, I I I watched Arrow season one, season two, <laughs> yeah. and then it just got. Where people were, you know, I, I fell off of it. Now yeah. that I check back, now it seems like all of C our WCW's shows are just all based in the DC verse. I mean, yeah. break it down for me. Yeah, um, there's a lot going on um, today at Barnes and Noble. Ken and I saw they legit have their own magazine <laughs> because there's so many shows now. Um, so we got Arrow, Batwoman, Legends of Tomorrow, Flash. Um, who am I? Who Those are all shows, Flash. all hour long shows. Who am I forgetting? Ken, who am I forgetting? Keep me honest. There's a fifth one. I can't remember. Arrow Flash. Anyways, uh, but they all, they all totally blend together. Oh, Supergirl. Duh. Yeah. Oh, nice. Um, yeah. And it's been really fun. So everything on Netflix we are caught up for except for Legends of Tomorrow. We just completed Arrow um, yesterday or today, uh, this morning. Um Nice. And so that's a great way to get it done. It's so do you love them? Or is it good? Is it it's primo? It's, it's good. Um, it's a lot of fun to see them weave together. And I'm really looking forward to that Crisis on Infinite Earth or whatever uh, event that's on right now. Nice. Um, the caveat is is that now that I'm all caught up, 
I have to either go to the app and watch, I think, the latest, because they don't have the whole season on there. I don't think they will. Sure. Uh, which sucks. Um, I might even just watch the event, because typically it doesn't really bear yeah, that much. Yeah, you can, you can still, it's it. not going to be spoiler yeah. crazy. So I don't know. I think that I'm going to, hey, Tommy. Um, I, I think that I am going to, uh, you know, check it out, though. Hell yeah. Um, and just do it that way, and then catch up from there. But yeah, no, it's been fun. Um, it's been a lot of fun. Supergirl picks up. Season one for me was a little rough. We talked about that when it first came out. Yeah. In terms of the writing and the, you know, that kind of stuff. But it's gotten it's gotten dark and gritty and fun. And I like the character, so I'm all about it. Hell yeah, man. I'm, I'm loving it, man. DC, yeah. keep making those shows. Yep. Oh, definitely. Um, yeah. Oh, bad. yeah. And I saw that uh, the new Harley Quinn movie is uh, going to be a yeah. rated R. Which is awesome. That's insane. Mm -hmm. I can't believe it. They're definitely, the, the Harley Quinn crowd is not a rated R crowd. The Harlequin crowd is 15, you know, like 14 year old girls and shit. I mean, I'm down, birds of prey, I'll bring my, I'll bring my 13 year old girl to it, even yeah. if it's rated R, I don't care. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I thought that was crazy that they got, went with the R rating, but exciting for us as fans, as 30 year old men. I I'll mean, be curious great. to see what they do, man. Like, I hope it's good. Um, you know, looking forward to Black Widow, of course, waiting impatiently for anything from Disney Plus, you know, with <clears throat> Marvel shows and stuff. Um, so. Yep. Yeah, so totally. Other than that, I've been also. I started playing. I have Xbox Game Pass. Okay. And I started playing Grand Theft Auto Five, even though this is like this, you know, six or seven year old game now. And I've heard everybody talking about how it makes so much money every single year, and it's so good. It's mm -hmm. like, dude, it's not that good. Everybody who's playing <laughs> GTA Five and saying it's like the best game ever, it's like, dude, pl have you played a Fallout game? Have yeah. you played Bioshock? Have yeah. you played like? I don't know any numerous awesome games. They're yeah. all better than Grand Theft Auto V. So yeah. that's Tom's hot take. Oh, okay. All, all right. right. But other than that, yeah. I, I got nothing more for this week, Johnny Boy. Um, other than that, though, on my cell phone, I have been trying out uh, Marvel Strike Force. Oh, the, yeah, that's right. The, um, I saw you play it. building game. So that's been a lot of fun, too. So if anybody wants to geek out with me, John's a man on there. The usual. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Turn-based uh, turn fighting game. Build your character kind of stuff. Yeah. And, I'm doing it, not spending any money in it whatsoever, just letting it stack up and do its own thing. So that's been a lot of fun. Perfect. Um, speaking of John Demand, though, definitely if you guys want to continue the conversation and get connected, hook up with us online. Uh, Twitter wise, at sign John on Demand, at sign Tom Stu Divine, yep. at sign a comic book look. Uh, definitely check out Rainbow, of course, as well, at sign Rainbow Comics SF. <laughs> you'll, you'll find it, it'll pop up. Uh, Dave, don't kill me. Um, but anyway. Yeah, shut up, Dave. Gosh. Um, but, um, we are really, really, really looking forward to seeing some of the new content from some of the new shows that are also hopping on with Rainbow 2. Yeah. Uh, so, um, that'll be a lot of fun just to kind of check out some of that content, but that's about it. Hell yeah, man. Heck yeah. Well, we'll shut it down here. You guys know the drill as always. We really hope you're having a good week. And for those of us buried under a lot of snow, that you're safe, uh, that you're staying warm and that you're reading those books. But you guys know the drill as always. We keep it fly, we keep it toasty, and we keep it comics for sure, man. Boom. <laughs> oh, sorry. I can't. I don't have to see a button to let it go, guys. We're still rocking and rolling live. All right. I got to get it here. Okay.